this video is going to cover getting acetone from eggshells and of course that includes eggshells and vinegar information about this i did do a previous video uh, on making calcium acetate you start by making that from eggshells and vinegar as i just mentioned and the reaction for that is the uh, calcium carbonate which is in the eggshells is mixed with the vinegar and or acetic acid here which is what this is will yield calcium acetate plus water plus carbon dioxide. You see the calcium acetate formed is aqueous here because it's mixed in some water. So you want to dry that out until you have a solid. Once you have a solid, you're going to distill this at a very high temperature of 350 degrees plus Celsius, which will yield acetone and calcium carbonate and some water. Because of the mixtures that can come over when you distill at such a high temperature, we're going to take our acetone and redistill it using fractional distillation to purify it. And when we do this, the acetone will come over around 53 to 58 degrees Celsius. I put 56 here because it was in the middle. For our materials, we need the calcium acetate, which again, I did in a previous video. And something of note is that when I do that, I always soak the eggshells in bleach ahead of time to get rid of all the organics. And I think because of that, I'm gonna get a better yield in this particular part of the experiment here. And you need a distillation apparatus, which has a fractional column for the second distillation. Our methods, we're gonna heat and distill the calcium acetate to start with. And then we're gonna take the product and we're gonna fractionally distill it in order to get our pure acetone in the end. And to cover this fractional distillation a little bit more, I'm gonna turn this over to Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball. Hello, this is Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball and I'm here to talk to you about some fractional dislocation. Now, this right here is a fractional distillation column, but it's probably multiplied by 20. So, a regular column is only about an inch across, and that's what this would be. But instead of just a straight tube of glass, they took and they put these there things in here, like a little dent, like you put your finger in there, like that, right? Except for they're only a couple millimeters in diameter, but they occur with regular intervals all the way up the tube. This is the bottom of the tube, that's the top of the tube. You got here down at the bottom, is you got your round bottom flash that's on the heat, and you got this volatile liquid coming all the way up, going all the way up here, and eventually going to the distillation tube, which would be going in that direction. Now, because the heat's down here and it's cooler up here, as your liquid gets heated, it heats each one of these little ones individually, but it does it kind of slowly because the outside air is coming in and it's kind of mixing deep down in here. So it takes a bit of time for this to heat up from this one to that one to this one to that one. And because it takes some time to heat up between all these little indentations right here, that means that you can divide the temperature a little bit better and you can have something that might be just a little less volatile falling behind here or something just a little bit more volatile up here. And so it divides it, it fractionates it. That's what that's talking about. I'm not talking about like one third or one quarter or none of that math stuff. Although that stuff's important, it's not talking about that. It's talking about breaking down the volatile distance in between their different temperatures so that by the time you get up to the very top of this thing, which is about foot long, you know, that's kind of long, you get to the top there, you have divided what you really want at the top to all the other stuff that's falling behind down here because these little indentations are cooling it down and it's dripping back down into that round bottom flask. So I hope this helped a little bit. It was fun to do, but I need to zip tie really. So I gotta be done right here. Thanks for watching. In a previous video, I made this fire gel and uh, saved some of it right here, but uh, you can already see some of the alcohol evaporated. So the calcium acetate is starting to come out of solution there. It's a mechanical reaction, not really a chemical one. So what I'm gonna do is just pour this in the speaker. It's got a wider mouth and wait for the alcohol to evaporate, which will give us the calcium acetate we need to make our acetone. I started to heat this to get rid of the alcohol quicker and it's almost done. To lessen the heat, I made a homemade double boiler here. Here's some brand new calcium acetate solution I made, and this is so we don't burn the calcium acetate and produce acetone before it's time. Combining the calcium acetate I just made with what I already had, I have 56.44 grams of calcium acetate that we'll start with in making our acetone. Putting the calcium acetate that we made from eggshells and vinegar into a 500 milliliter round bottom flask, and that's to set it up for the distillation, the first distillation. I'm going to turn on the heat here. It's ready to distill. 
we need to reach at 380 degrees Celsius or close to it to form the acetone. So I'll be covering most of the apparatus with uh, aluminum foil to help reach that temperature. It's been about 20 minutes and we're just starting to get our first drips on this side. As it's dripping on the other side, we still have quite a bit of powdered calcium acetate on this side that needs to be broken down. So I had to go a little bit nuts on the aluminum foil here just to make sure I can get as much heat trapped in there as I could. My thermometer maxes out at around 250 degrees Celsius and it's done so. It's been stuck there for some time. It's been about two hours so far. This does continue to drip over slowly so I've got to assume that the calcium acetate's at least 350 degrees plus Celsius and I just think this is going to take some time. It's about three hours out and I'm guessing there's about six to seven milliliters, maybe eight in there. And you can notice that it's that brownish color. It can be yellow to yellow brown in color like it is here. But of course that'll clear up when we fractionally distill this. It's been about five hours now and nothing has dripped over in about a half hour. So I'm gonna call it quits. We see some calcium carbonates definitely collected on this end, but we're done. Here is our first distillate here. I'm just going to measure this to see how much we're gonna start with before we fractionally distill this product. And quite frankly, there's significantly more than I counted on. Looks like we have just under 22 milliliters of liquid here that we're gonna fractionally distill. This is a fractional column here. You can see the protrusions that go inside like that, as I explained earlier, and it sits up and down vertical. There's our messy acetone that needs to be purified. So 500 milliliter round bottom flask up to a fractional column across the traditional distillation and down here to where we should collect our good acetone. Because acetone will come out between about 53 and 58 degrees Celsius, I'm not gonna heat this very much at first because we don't wanna bring over other things eventually too. I've added the aluminum foil just to insulate the fractional column a little bit more. The coil is dark, it's not red at all, but we can see acetone really starts to act up at a pretty low temperature. It's been about 15 minutes and we're getting our first drops of acetone over here. To prevent distilling anything we don't want, I'm probably going to stop this distillation a little bit early so we get as pure of acetone as we can over here. This has been running for about 20 minutes and that's starting to look pretty gunky in there. We still have clear drips on this side, but I'm not going to take any chances and we're going to stop. We have our final product here, nice clear acetone, but this has a strange odor. It smells like acetone, but there's something else. Final yield, 5.2 milliliters of acetone. The true test of our final yield, see if it burns. Wow, and there you have it.